Well, yet another sequel slash slash reboot slash remake is coming out in the form of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And once again, I've decided to to kind of give my thoughts on on the rest of the series before before the new one comes out, which is going to be about in a week and a half. So, with that said, the Planet of the Apes franchise, even if you don't really know anything about movies on a on a technical level you probably know something about the planet of the apes movies i mean you probably know the premise i mean they have i mean the premise itself has just become so iconic at this point um and it has become just so culturally significant that i can't really imagine anyone being i mean unless you are you are really young like you are you are a toddler I can't really imagine you being completely unaware of the Planet of the Apes movies. Um, but looking past their legacy, how are they in terms of quality? Well, let's start with the first one, the original 1966 or 1968 classic, Planet of the Apes, starring Charlton Heston and Roddy McDowell. The, the premise is, I don't really know if I even need to tell you the premise. I mean. I mean, three astronauts. It was supposed to be four, but one of them, one of them sprung a leak in their hibernation chamber, so she kind of died. Um, so three astronauts, after a light speed voyage, and in and in deep hibernation, they crash land on some unknown planet that seemingly that is uh, seemingly devoid of life. Um, the soil is incapable of sustaining any kind of plant life. So, I mean, it seems like this big wasteland. So the three astronauts, Taylor, Dodge, and Landon, Taylor being played by Charlton Heston, set off to find some form of life. They are, I mean, they presume, according to their, according to their readouts in the ship, they have, they have crash landed far, far into the future. As far as I know, this, as far as they know, this is a completely different planet. So, <clears throat> they set off. And they find people all right, except except these people are completely mute. They are just savages. They are incapable of speak. They are they are incapable of speech. They are they are just like animals. And and before long, they come across the dominant species on the planet, which is apes. I mean, gorillas, orangutans, chimps. They are. They are on a higher plane of intelligence than than man, and and before long, the astronauts, along with the other humans, are rounded up and taken to this ape city, where where humans are just treated like the worst kind of vermin. They are experimented on. They are led around on leashes. They are they are they're kept in zoos, and their <laughs> their corpses are in museums. And Taylor. Taylor, not only is he trying to escape, but he is also trying to figure out how society got this way, how apes toppled humans as the dominant form of life on Earth, and and really on this on this mysterious planet, which came first, ape or human, and which was more advanced. So that's the basic premise, without really giving too much away. Now, one thing I have to comment on is is the acting, and this movie. I don't really know if I'm beating a dead horse by saying this, but I think this movie gets kind of an unfair reputation of being kind of this really campy '60s movie about with with this with this over-the-top acting and and almost uh, almost cheesy sci-fi dialogue. But I don't find that to be the case. I mean, I think I think the acting, yeah, it can be it can be uh, a little overdramatic at points, um, namely. Namely from Charlton Heston and uh, and Maurice Evans, but you know, I think the acting is surprisingly solid. Charlton Heston gives makes for a very likable screen screen presence in the form of the main human character Taylor. And and what I really like about this character is that he is by no means a perfect character. I mean, he's kind of a jerk to his fellow man, and and the beautiful irony is that. Is that he harbors absolutely no respect for his fellow man, and then he, and then here he is, being stranded in a society 
where man is treated like the, like I said, the worst kind of vermin imaginable. Um, so, so there's a real there's a real sense of character art going on, and and Shaw contestants, you can you can really buy the simultaneous desperation and determination. I mean, Heston is a very powerful, powerful screen presence in a lot of in a lot of movies he's in, and this is really no exception. I think you really needed a powerful screen persona like Heston to really to really balance things out and and keep the main character from feeling too too weak in the face of in the face of just constant humiliation and experimentation. I mean, he is he is. He is completely beaten up in the, by the end of this movie. I mean, he just from a physical aspect, he goes through a lot of abuse. So you got to give it give it to him there. And the fact that he is he is still able to to come out kicking in terms of in terms of giving a very giving a very powerful performance is pretty impressive on the part of Heston. And of course, you can't really mention Planet of the Apes without bringing up Roddy McDowell as Cornelius. And yeah, Roddy McDowell. You can definitely see why he why he became such a uh, such a superstar after this movie. I mean, he he is one of the one of the most iconic uh, actors to ever put on one of these ape suits. So <clears throat> so for his for his uh, first performance in this series, he again does a really good job. You can definitely feel the uh, you can definitely tell that there is very much an intellectual in this in this character while at the same time while at the same time you can you can tell <laughs> that he really that he really ha has a certain set of values i mean he yeah he's concerned about self preservation but he's also concerned about the preservation of his wife zira and the fact that Roddy McDowell is able to convey all this with just with just his very simian performance and also being able to work through the face mask um Again, it's pretty impressive, and it, the same goes for Kim Hunter. Kim Hunter is also excellent in this movie as uh, Doctor Zira, um, Cornelius's uh, wife. So, I mean, she not only does she have really good chemistry with Charlton Heston, but also, but also she she is also very believable as this intellectual. She also is able to work well through this through this face mask, and she is, and she ends up becoming a very strong female character. Not too stern, but at the same time not a complete pushover either. I mean, she does have a little bit of edge to her when she needs to. And Maurice Evans as the bad guy, Dr. Zayas, on the surface, he seems like just your stereotypical, oh, oh, racist bad guy, but, but we soon learn that, that he has, that he has, in hindsight, a very legitimate reason for for keeping the secrets that he does, um, and Maurice Evans, not only do you, do you again get by the intellectual side of this of this guy, but also you um, he does a good job with the with the uh, stern stern demeanor of Doctor Zayas, and also uh, what what else does he what else does he do right? And also, you can also tell that he really is concerned about the well-being of his people. So, so yeah, those three are are the main three actors in Ape Suits, and all the rest of the actors in Ape Suits are are also are also pretty good. They they don't do quite as good a job working through the working through the face masks and the and the prosthetics, but but you know they do a good job. They I like uh, a lot of the. A lot of the very simian movements of of a lot of the extras and, and minor characters. I mean, they <clears throat> they move like you would expect an ape to. I mean, yeah, you could argue that you know their before their proportions look a little bit too human at times, especially in in regards to the chimp characters. But you know. You know, this this is a more advanced society of apes, and a presumably more evolved society of apes than something like 
uh, I don't know, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where, where you know, the apes are just, just starting out. So, so I was able to buy it a, a, little, a little more than later entries in the series. Whenever, whenever you would see, a, see an ape walk around like a human, I was able to buy it a lot more here than in something like Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. So, so they're really good, and I, someone who I think actually doesn't get enough credit is Linda Harrison as Nova, this uh, this mute girl who who becomes kind of a compatriot for Taylor. Now, now I have I have read the book um, that this is based on, and really I think Linda Hamilton or Linda, ha Linda Harrison plays Nova pretty well, perfectly. Um, a lot of these actors really, really do these characters justice, but Linda Harrison again, I don't really think gets enough credit because she, she has no dialogue at all. She is just forced to use her body language and her, and her face to convey, to convey whatever kind of emotions that she has, and the fact that she is able to, to craft a character around, around seemingly nothing. I mean. A lot of the time, she's just kind of listening to Charlton Heston, or just kind of fiddling around with something in the background. The fact that they were able to craft a likable character out of that, um, someone, I mean, someone who is clearly trying to understand Taylor, even though she can't really grasp a lot of the concepts that he's talking about, um, I think is I think is pretty impressive, especially for a relative newcomer like she was at the time. So. Yeah, all three of the, or not all, all of the main actors are great. <clears throat> and one obviously can't talk about Planet of the Apes without commenting on the, on the social aspects of it and how it deals with all of these complex themes like racism and, and prejudice and, and even a little bit of indoctrination and misinformation. So, so this movie does all of those exceedingly well. I mean, when, whenever, when they start to unravel the mystery of the origins of this planet, every single step feels, feels earned. It's, it only served, and it only served to make me want to learn more about this planet. Um, <clears throat> and the conversations, and even some of the conversations and some of the dialogue that they have, you know, you know, Dr. Zayas, or it may not have been Dr. Zayas, it's, it was one of the orangutans. Who, who said, who when talking about Taylor and and fair treatment to a human who could talk, um, <clears throat> he said, well, he is not an ape, so he really has, so he really cannot be. Ape law does not apply to him, because again, he is not an ape; he is just a savage human, and even even the apes trying to come up with all these other explanations as to how Taylor can talk when no, none of the other humans can, and kind of starting to accuse Dr. Zero of possibly experimenting on him. Um, again, is tackling concepts like like uh, like racism and, and, and all these, and certain social prejudices. So, and again, it's not too on the nose, because this is, this is a setting where you could buy that conversations like this are being had, or are or are being uh, or are being discussed because because like I said, the humans are just these are just these animalistic creatures in this world, and you do buy that a one who can talk and talk perfectly, just speak perfect English would conceivably freak these apes out. They really. T you really buy that they really don't know where this guy, what this guy is. So, so the way that the apes are trying to figure out what Taylor is, while at the same time Taylor is trying to figure out how the apes came into power, it's these kind of dual mysteries that really, that really give this movie an element of intrigue that, that, for me anyway, had my attention up until the very end. <clears throat> And and going back to the book, there there were liberties taken with with how the the uh, ape society was realized because in the book it was 
it was very much in line with with our own society. I mean, they were the, they were these towering buildings. There were apes in in these kind of business suits. It was much more it was much more like a mirror image of our own society, just with humans replaced with apes. Um, <clears throat> and honestly, if they had if they had realized that word for word, description for description, I think it would have been the cause of some unintentional comedy. I mean, in the book, even the book even says some of the some of the uh, some of the circus routines on on the main character's own planet. He's not called Taylor in the book. He's called uh, Ulysses Ulysses Moreau or Ulysses Moreau. On 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 Earth, on Earth, seeing seeing a circus monkey with a hat on is is kind of a cause for laughter. I think I think you would kind of accidentally achieve the same effect by putting apes in suits and kind of having them towed around briefcases and, and walking around the city with with gloves on their on their feet. Instead of instead of shoes they have gloves on their feet. I think I think it would have been too that is something that I don't think would have aged as well as what they they eventually came up with, which is the more which is the more primitive ape society. You could argue, well, if these apes are so advanced, then how come they don't have the towering skyscrapers and the technology and whatnot? Well, they say in the movie that that uh, the ape the apes uh, understanding of 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 technology and all this has kind of been halted. They say in the movie that. Um, <clears throat> That there, it is kind of hinted at that everything is being driven, or it's not really hinted at. It is, it is strongly indicated that everything, everything in terms of in terms of societal advancement, is being is being dictated by these chimpanzees. More specifically, Doctor Zayas, which again is one of the things that makes him an interesting villain. <clears throat> so, and. And again, when you hear why he is doing what he is doing, it's it's all the more understandable, especially given the twist ending that uh, honestly has been has kind of been ruined um, for a lot of people because it has become so iconic. That's that's one of the downgrades I think of being as iconic as this is is because some of the scenes kind of lose their element of surprise. But you know, you know, I digress. Planet of the Apes. There's not really any questioning that it's a great movie. It's it's not just a great sci-fi movie, it's a great movie. It's if this was handled the wrong way, it could have just felt like a real a very lackluster version of the Twilight Zone. But the incredibly intelligent and thought provoking writing, the powerful acting, the uh, the very good the very good masks and prosthetics for for the time. Um <clears throat> And and the liberties that were taken all all come together to make this to make this every bit the classic that it has been that it has been hailed as all these years. So, yeah, the original Planet of the Apes is it's hailed as one of the science fiction classics for a reason. It it really is just that good and just that thought provoking. It's more than just than just oh humans crash land on this ape planet and they have to stop these evil apes and, and get home. No, it's it's really a look into into a society into into a society that's in the end is you could conceivably draw comparisons to our own with. So so yeah, when I I don't I'm not trying to really sugarcoat this movie, but I honestly can't find a whole lot wrong with it, aside from the fact that that some of the effects are kind of dated by today's standards, but but you know it's it really is it really is a very thought provoking piece of sci fi cinema, and even the music the the music by Jerry Goldsmith this is one of the this is one of the movies that made me realize that we really lost someone great when we lost Jerry Goldsmith because Jerry Goldsmith's score for this is is haunting it is. It can be haunting. It can be very. It can be very scary and energetic. Um, it can be. It can be very subtle. It can actually be kind of. Uh, it could actually be kind of exotic when it needs to be. Um, 
some of the musical cues actually sound like like a, like an eight chorus. So, <clears throat> so there's that, and even the direction, the very eerie direction, a lot of the time, and a lot of what makes this movie work is the shock value. I mean, the scenes where the humans are being hunted down by the apes are just are just so striking. Um, it's honestly, for for the faint of heart, it can honestly be kind of difficult to watch humans, all of these human extras, these human savages, just be gunned down and netted up and just driven driven like animals by these apes on horses. So, yeah, Planet of the Apes, it's, it's fantastic. What else can I say? <laughs>